All right, today we're talking all about streak usage in competitive Call of Duty, when to use them, how to use them, and really getting that full benefit of your well-earned streak uh, so that you and your team can actually get some really good benefits off of it uh, because it can really change the tide of a game. So let's get right into it. All right, you're starting to get better or you're just tearing it up in rank play and you're starting to get a little bit more streaks uh, under your belt, but you don't really know when to use them in what situations and how really to use them to get the most benefit out of it uh, for your team. So the big thing to note is you've done the hard part already, you've gotten the streak, now you just need to put them in the right situation. You're going to be in that situation at some point in the game uh, that you need to be using that streak. And that can happen at a wide variety of different situations in competitive COD, but I'll break it down into the most common situations that you'll get in uh, that you can be using that streak. So specifically at the pro level in hardpoint, you usually see streaks being used on break opportunities. Uh, not so much hold opportunities. You know, a lot of times if the hold is being contested, like they've already broken in and you might be spawning out and you wanna help, you know, the last two or three guys remaining on your team, uh, that's a situation to use it. But most of the time it is during those breaking opportunities. So a really good time to use it is during that last few seconds of scrap time, right as the hill is popping. Uh, make sure that you call out to your team that you're gonna get that scrap time so you can get the extra benefit of having those three extra guys working the break while you are you know sitting in your tablet controlling the cruise missile uh, from the scrap time picking up those last two seconds and then we'll hit off and continue that push with them uh, later on after you use the streak it's important to use it during these breaking situations because specifically while breaking the other team isn't constantly moving so they're going to be stagnant uh, in their specific spots most of the time uh, so you can have a better opportunity of actually getting those kills you know if you're in a holding situation and you know the hills about to pop they're gonna be moving moving and you can technically use it but in my opinion uh, you're just better off holding that setup with your teammates you know that extra gun in the gunfights uh, when that break is coming in by the enemies is just so much more important because that extra weapon on the map is super crucial for these holds uh, but when you're in that breaking situation and you're just you know holding off that scrap timer or you just spawned out and you're not even close to actually hitting the hill with your teammates it's a really good opportunity to get that extra kill or extra damage off while you're completely out of the play so personally I favor when you're in that breaking situation but again there are super situational opportunities you know if you're about to win the game or you're about to roll over streaks uh, you can definitely use it in the holding position uh, it's just really situational in that sense uh, but most of the time you're going to be using it in that breaking situation for hard point so control is a little bit different. I personally like to use it as kind of like a fail safe in case we're about to lose, uh, you know, a favored side, you know, maybe a defense on a, on a control like Expo defense where it's defense favored and they might be stacking the point. I'd rather use it there, obviously, than just in the middle of the round when kills are just going down. It's a really good, powerful tool uh, to use as a guarantee like that. You know, even for a hotel, if you're about to lose that defense and you want to slam it on one of the walls towards that B point, you know, go for it because, you know, you're probably not going to get a more perfect opportunity in that sense so you really got to look at the opportunity look at the situation at hand and be like you know I want to secure this round for our team or I want to really break this round open you know in my sense it doesn't really make sense to do that like let's say you're on hotel offense and you haven't capped a point yet you wouldn't use a streak to open up a so you can still have a chance in that round it's not really about prolonging your chance it's about really guaranteeing uh, and getting the most out of it from that so you know and that's obviously situational you know if you're down o2 and you need to use it for sure use it but most of the time it's going to be that fail safe that ace up your sleeve uh, where you can use it to your team's advantage and actually secure a round win so you're in that situation you're calling the streak in uh, where do you actually place it so i'll go over a bunch of spots for mw2 specifically uh, that are kind of like cheese spots where it actually bypasses any trophies and we'll talk about trophies obviously too but most of the time you do want to focus on those hills that are open areas uh, where you can actually have a chance of getting a kill in you know you don't want to be putting into like p4 embassy where it's super close you're inside a building uh, it just makes no sense when there are open areas of the map uh, with hills on them and if you're asking you know if you're in that situation where you're breaking on with your team uh, it's an open hill do you go after the guy that's in the hill or do you go after someone that's outside the hill uh, super situational but most of the time I would kill the person in the hill uh, by killing the person in the hill it makes a time white uh, and forces the enemy team to actually adjust based off of that you know sometimes there are situations where you want to focus the guy that's holding the spawns for the enemy team but for the 
most part, if it's open a hill, uh, focus on that guy that's in the hill first uh, and then collapse on in with your team. So we'll go into NW2 specifically. And uh, the big thing I wanna talk about is the trophies. Obviously uh, the trophies, if they were full health, and that's a big caveat, if they were full health, uh, they would block the cruise missiles. You know, obviously uh, not the most competitive thing. You shouldn't really be able to stop a full on cruise missile with something you get for free, but that's like a topic for another day. But to bypass these trophies, what you either have to do is throw some tax at it with your team or counter it with a double streak. So you can actually kill the trophy with one streak and then uh, open on up so you can get the second streak in. And some teams would actually really uh, do that and coordinate that on their breaks. And it really would be uh, a safe way of actually getting kills. But if you don't have two streaks in your hand, what you can do is call out to your teammates to use those tacticals. All you have to do is weaken it once with one person's tacticals. So make sure that you're actually communicating with your team and calling out, you know, throw your tax here, throw your tax at the hill or wherever you you're directing your kill streak at to make sure that no trophies are actually going to hinder your ability uh, to kill that person that might be in that power position. So you can either bypass it with those tacks or with that extra cruise missile or what you could really do uh, was bang it onto the side of the walls. What was actually the case for MW2 was that the cruise explosion radius was actually larger uh, than the trophy range. So you can actually blow streaks up on like the sides of walls uh, and actually kill people that are in the hill even though they might have a trophy right on top of them. So this was a cool trick, you know, obviously I don't know going to these future games if trophies are even going to stop cruise missiles anymore or if this trick is going to work. But for MW2, this was 100% the case uh, and you can test it out in rank play. So let's go through the maps and take a look at the hills that you'd actually use those streaks on. So what you can do is you can use it on P2, obviously super open hill. Uh, you can actually bang it off this sidewall here. So that was a really cool tip too. P3, obviously big money hill. If possible, you do want to be focusing on those money hills, obviously, because if you're in that breaking situation, you can really screw up an enemy team's money hill to either come back in a game or, or you know, extend that lead. Uh, so those hills are obviously the most important. P3, super open. You can actually curve it and bang it on top of the statue and kill anyone in the hill. Uh, but if you're not really in tune with, with curving like that, what you can do is just call out to your teammate throw some tax onto the hill uh, so that you can kill the person on the hill or if you want to target an AR power position you know one of these two spots but make sure that you're directing that break towards that side and actually letting your teammates know to throw tax towards that. P4 we're obviously not going to use it it's inside. Uh, P1 if you wanted to you can actually bang it on these little awnings uh, as same thing with P5 so super open hills on P5 and P1 uh, and you can actually bang it on these little aw awnings and kill people that are inside the hill. Okay hotel main times people use streaks uh, P4, P5, P6. Obviously P4, uh, you see this a lot in control, but you can bang uh, these side walls and kill people on the hill. So if anyone was holding maybe from the front side here, uh, you can kill them that way. P5, you can actually go through the glass and bang it on uh, the side of this wall. It's, it's like right on the bricks. It's a super specific area right here. That's really important of actually killing anyone because a lot of times people have trophies on this hill. So if you can bang it right there, that was the best opportunity to get kills there. And then obviously P6, super open. So if you wanted to go for anyone that might be uh, playing outer here or focusing someone who is playing on time uh, and having your teammates coordinate some tacks and you can get uh, some kills that way. And obviously for control on this map, same thing, uh, P5 and P4, you're gonna be doing the same type of thing to get kills that way. Biggest opportunities for Embassy, P2, Open Hill, and P3. You can actually bang it on the side of the walls on both these hills. Uh, there's actually a specific height that you can do it on, but uh, anywhere along this wall, you can actually kill people that are on hill, even if they might have a trophy. But again, specifically on this map, curving is actually really important uh, to actually hitting the wall like that. So again, focusing on coordinating those attacks with your teammates, and you can kill anyone that might be playing the vans or the truck here. Your, uh, super big power position. On P3, this was Tax City, so you most of the time they wouldn't even have their trophy up and you can kill them off the hill there. Uh, but again, if you've all just spawned up, make sure that the tax are going first before uh, the cruise comes on in. For Mercado here, P3, P5, and P7. Obviously P5 because it's super open. P3, actually you can go into these little holes in the roof and slam your crews through those and actually get some really nice kills because of how important it was for that specific hill to hold it because it was such a big money hill. You know, P3, one of the biggest money hills in the game. If you can coordinate tax with your team or just try and slam it on in, uh, it was really important to, to try and break into that hill with a streak because it was just super hard to break it uh, without one. And then obviously P7, 
uh, the most open out of all the hills. And a majority of the cruises on this map would go towards this P7 just because uh, it was so open. You can get tax in for free because of these open spawns on the lane where you can just chuck it over uh, any of these roofs uh, to actually get onto that P7. And then you can just slam it on, you know, one of these power positions, either trucks over here, this car, and actually uh, try and get a break onto that hill specifically to have a good P7 because once again, big money hill for this map. For Hydro, I don't remember any bangable spots, but I do remember P2, P4 being the most dominant ones for these streaks. Obviously, the two biggest money hills for this map, plus some really open areas, so it's going to be free kills as long as they don't have a trophy. But if they do, again, open areas to actually get those techs on in, and it should be free kills uh, for your team with those streaks. A Stilo, everything's open for this control map, but most of the time you would see it on this B site or uh, actually trying to take a power position towards that red tower. This is one of those cases where because it's such a big power position at top red tower, you might not be going for the person that might be holding on defense in the hill. You just might as well get that guy completely out of that power position uh, if he's holding a super hard lane like that on defense. And lastly for Expo here, uh, you're not gonna be using it on that B side. Most of the time you're gonna be using it towards this either A point as a fail safe if you're on defense and they're starting to cap that point, or if you're on your you know, final two pushes on offense, uh, you can go for anyone that might be playing you know, power positions anchoring uh, towards this side or over here or even towards uh, the huts over here you know really open areas once again but really important power positions for the defense so if you're trying to use it on offense specifically use it towards there but for most of the time uh, we would just use it on the defense as a fail safe like that so thank you guys for watching and thank you for making it to the end of the video i hope you guys enjoyed this little breakdown on uh, streak usage and when to actually use the streaks and really get the most benefit out of them uh, so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one